Hi there, welcome to part two of photography week. Today we're gonna make a cyanotype print similar to this one. We're gonna collage and we're also going to draw on top of it. Uh, so I wanna start by revisiting our definition of photography. Uh, today we're gonna focus on a working on a sensitive surface and that is our cyanotype. Uh, so cyanotype is a two-part chemical. Um, you can usually get it in containers like this. Uh, you mix it up and then you can use a paintbrush or a sponge and you treat or literally paint onto any surface that can absorb something wet. Uh, thick paper, fabric that we're gonna use today, t-shirt. Um, but in your kits, you have a piece of fabric that has already been treated with the chemical. And then when you take the cyanotype, and expose it to UV light or sunlight, it turns blue. Um, so keep in mind our keyword from last lesson, mise-en-scene, uh, and focus on it's everything that we put in the frame to express, um, in, in this case, to express like the mood or the emotions of the scene. And then our second key word today is gonna to be resourceful. And what I mean by resourceful is it's getting the most out of what we have. Uh, so getting the most out of materials, tools, our time, and our space. So like our environment or where, where we are physically. Uh, and it's also acknowledging the value and potential in what we have. Um, and uh, in my example, um, I made an image that was inspired by a trip I made uh, in the midst of COVID because while we can't go to like parties or um, big gatherings, I can still go for a bike ride, I can still go camping, and I can still safely social distance uh, with a couple friends and still get to see them in that way. So how can you be resourceful today, or how do you think about that? Uh, but first, uh, let's make sure we have all of our supplies. So today, you're gonna need scissors. Um, you're gonna need the transparencies that are in your art kit. Um, those are the little stick figures and the landscape, so you should have two of those. Uh, you need the cyanotype treated cloth. Uh, yours will look uh, like a very dark uh, grayish blue and it's gonna be inside that black bag uh, don't take it out until we're ready uh, especially don't expose it to any sunlight until we're ready to develop the print and then if you have um, some clear tape that will be helpful and then some extras that could also be helpful for today um, is a piece of plexiglass or a glass um, just from an old picture frame hanging around about the size eight and a half by eleven inches and uh, if you have any miscellaneous tiny objects like rocks or string or beads, anything that we can put on top of our print, and I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Um, I wanted to first just briefly show some inspiration of an artist that I met a couple years ago named Andrea Trung. Um, one, she uses cyanotypes in a way that I've just never seen, so this piece here um, I mean, imagine the cloth you have, and she combined them to make like a mural size installation. Um, and I really appreciate her work too, because I think she's very resourceful with her materials and uses a lot of common household items like sugar, um, the cyanotype print she makes in her home. I think another way that Andrea is resourceful in her work is the density of ideas and concepts that she can pull out of a single subject. Uh, so I really encourage you, uh, if you're into this print, to explore more of her work. Um, it's rich in history, it's rich in creativity, um, and even if you don't, uh, just off the bat, um, you know, just think about like, you know, why why is she using large scale in this particular piece? Um, and here she's using the lionfish. So think about what that could mean. 
uh, kind of in relation to our mise en scene um, because everything is very intentional as far as what she's putting in her frame of an installation. So before we start the activity, uh, and even while you're making it, um, I want us to think back to the collages we made in our first um, in our first week, and think about what does the opposite of chaos look like to you. Uh, for me, the opposite of chaos, it's calm, it's grounded, and it's organized. And also think about a time when you made the best out of an uncomfortable situation. Um, so again, for my print, I, I was very much responding to COVID and how I can't go to artist openings anymore, I can't go to parties, I can't hang out in large groups, um, but I, I can go outside and I can go for bike rides and I was still able to go camping with one of my best friends and keep a safe distance and enjoy uh, the summer. So I have a list of instructions here that uh, we're going to do side by side. Um, but first, I want you, uh, if, if you feel comfortable, uh, share your, your answers to, your, to the discussion questions with your family or your friends, um, or at least just have them in the back of your head. And then we're going to cut out those transparencies, um, and I want you to cut out the ones that represent your answers to our discussion questions. And then we're going to arrange them, uh, and then take out your uh, cyanotype treated fabric. Uh, again, make sure you're in a dim room. Uh, lamps are okay. They won't expose the they won't expose the cyanotype. Um, so I encourage you so you can see. <laughs> and then uh, place your transparencies on the fabric. And then that's when you're gonna want to tape the transparencies to the to the fabric. Or that's when your plexiglass can come in handy. Um, that's so that the wind doesn't blow it away. And then you're gonna develop it in the sunlight uh, for 30 minutes. Um, and then you're gonna rinse your sienna type uh, treated fabric under water, and you want to rinse it until um, the white parts are completely white and rid of the chemical. Um, then dry it. I used to, I used to I like to use a hair dryer, uh, and then I have a little optional bonus step in there if you want to tone your sienna type, which I did here. Um, yours is going to turn a nice bright blue when you initially expose it. Um, I toned mine so that it could be, it's, uh, I guess it's still a little bit blue, but it's more of like a gray. And then we're going to embellish it uh, with your Sharpies in your kit. Um, and feel free to grab any other markers you have laying around the house um, to draw over your print. So let's make a CN type. So the important thing first to note is you want to work uh, in a semi-dark environment that doesn't get a lot of sunlight. Um, I have a clamp lamp right now. That's okay because the cyanotype solution we're about to use is responsive to UV light, uh, sunlight. Um, so you don't have to be in complete darkness. Um, if we were working with darkroom photography, that'd be different, but today we're doing uh, cyanotype. Um, so cyanotype, as we mentioned before, is a two-part solution, um, so you can actually get it in containers like this. Um, let's, uh, uh, so what you would do, you can get this uh, pre-made uh, chemical here and you mix uh, part A, part B. Um, I like to use, I don't know, just whatever's laying around the house, mix it up, and then I would get a surface. I'd paint a surface with this. Um, but in your kit, yours has already been um, pre-treated, so all we have to do is prep um, our transparencies. So that's the that's the fun part. That's the collage we're gonna do. Um, but do remember, uh, if you really if you get into this, um, you can get a pack of this for like twenty dollars and just make so many prints. Um, you can get that at Black too. Uh, cool. So let's get started. So our theme has been chaos so far, and then in our last exercise activity, uh, we, we gathered images that felt chaotic. So for this one, I want us to think about the opposite of chaos and what 
does that look like for you? Um, so for me, when I think of the opposite of chaos, that's calm, it's, it's peaceful, um, I feel grounded, um, and people that come to mind are my friends and are my family, and we're outside. So I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna recreate um, a recent memory of mine of going camping with a friend. Um, and I know we're using images of like little stick figures and silhouettes of uh, landscapes, um, but we're gonna fill it in after with some. We're gonna color over these, so it, we're gonna be abstract with it for a moment. Um, so you can collage and cut out these transparencies any way you wish. Um, I recently went camping and there was a lot of grass uh, while we went biking. Um, we biked, we biked so far to go camping. Um, and one of my favorite memories from the trip was us, uh, we were really tired and, uh, there was a, there was a grass field. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this landscape. Um, now, first I am, I'm just gonna get the layout down because even though this is dim lighting, I, I don't want to pre-expose our, our treated material. Um, so that's what we're doing right now. We're just going to, we're gonna set it up so we can experiment. Uh, so here's my grass. Um, we did see some trees, so I'm actually going to, um, I'm gonna cut this out. And let's see, I think I'm gonna cut out some of the trees. You can do whatever you want with this. So now we're kind of working with the transparency is kind of like a sticker. Um, and as I mentioned before the demo, um, remember when we're making this, this is a negative. So anything that blocks the sunlight from coming through, um, it, it won't get exposed there. It's all going to wash away. So um, anything that is black is actually going to be the opposite. It's going to be white. And if it's white, all of that is going to get hit with the sun and it's going to turn, um, it's going to turn our sienna type blue right here. Um, cool. So again, let's see. So I cut some trees. Let's see. And during this trip, let's see, I was really tired when we got off the bike, so I'm gonna pick this person sitting. And again, to sit is a very leisurely activity. And to me, that's the opposite of chaos. Just, just relaxing and being in the moment, enjoying the scenery. And we don't have to cut it too perfect because the main thing we want um, is this black piece here. Um, so I'm gonna place myself here, <laughs> um, sitting in the grass, and then I'm gonna maybe put kind of the trees up here. I'm looking at the trees. Um, and then, as I said, um, I feel really calm when I'm with my friends. Uh, so this is gonna be uh, the friend that I went camping with. So she's sitting over here. And already I feel calm, you know, I'm thinking about the sandwiches we ate when we took our break. Um, I think I actually want, let's see, I want another tree in here. Uh, I'm kind of imagining this is like the foreground and like the trees are our background. You can hear the birds. Very calm setting. Now again, you don't have to cut these out if you wanted to just lay it down like that. That's cool too. It's whatever, whatever you want. some trees there and we did have to bike through uh the city to get to our campsite so i'm gonna actually i i want i think just a little bit of this just to so i'm gonna put the city way up here because that was kind of happening that ha we biked through that that was in the background um so this is my scene um you can also use i encourage you to look for things around the house um, when I go outside, I'm gonna add some rocks. I'm gonna, I think these kind of look like some clouds. So I'm gonna try that out. Um, cool. So step one, cut out your transparencies and then you want to collage them 
on a test piece of paper um, before we use the treated cloth with the sienna type. Um, and then as you're collaging, keep in mind that whatever you see here, it's actually going to be the opposite as far as black and whites, or in this case, the sienna type blue and white. So whatever is black is going to block the sunlight from exposing the fabric, and whatever is white is actually going to get exposed by the fabric and turn blue. Um, so all these little people, they're going to be white, and the grass is going to be white, um, and that's going to be perfect for the next step because then we can color it in with whatever we want. Um, let's see. Uh, and then uh, we have some extra pieces, so maybe just put those away so you can uh, use those for another time. Alright, uh, so this is just some uh, packaging I got the other day. Uh, this is going to be uh, a hard surface so that I can lay down my transparency as so. Um, and then the next... Oh, we need to actually get our fabric. Ah. All right, now again, before you do this, make sure uh, you are not in a room that is that has a lot of sunlight. You can get away with it if there's, you know, right now it's uh, we're just hitting sunset and there's a little bit of sunlight coming through my house, uh, my house window, and that is okay, um, but for the most part we want to work in a very dim environment. Um, all right, so. Uh, your sienna type is located in this black bag, um, again, to block out the sunlight. Uh, so I'm just going to move my transparencies over here. Alright, this is the fun part. Taking it out of the bag. Okay, so you can see there's two sides to this, um, and you want to go with the side that's a little bit darker. <laughs> a little bit darker. Um, now I have um, a piece of glass from an old, um, just a frame I had sitting around. If you don't have a piece of glass, um, that's okay. Um, then I encourage you uh, to find some. Uh, clear tape, you know, just uh, some scotch tape. Um, anything that won't make a a mark like the, the black transparency. I mean, that's okay too, but um, okay, so we're working on our treated surface here. Um, and I have my drafted layout, so I'm just gonna start laying out, resetting that, um, and this is when we really want to pay attention to, uh, to the detail of our layout because this is it, this is what's going to be exposed. Alright, so I got my grassy landscape, this is me sitting in the grass, this is my friend. And we're looking at the trees here. And then I got the little city skyline, because that's what we bike through. Um, and then again, this is the step if you if you don't have a piece of glass. Um, what I would do is just go through and tape each of these transparencies down. And if you can help it, um, if you're going to go this route and you're going to tape everything down, um, you might want to save this activity for a day that is not windy. Um, <laughs> I have lost, well, I haven't lost, but I have, transparencies have blown away from me before. Um, so that's why I started using the glass. Um, it works wonders, the transparencies won't go anywhere, but um, there's a lot of ways we can do this. We don't have to do a lot, just a little two pieces here and there. Mm -hmm. 
that's my picture. Cool. Um, so I'm actually going to do the tape and the glass um, so my stuff doesn't blow away. Um, and now we take it outside. Uh, so I, I forgot to add my little rocks. Uh, I just put them on top of the, the glass here. I'm hoping that they're going to look like little clouds. Let's see what we did. I'm just going to remove... You don't have to really be this careful. Um, I just want to get the transparencies off of our fabric. Um, and now the last step is to, to rinse away the our cyanotype chemical. All right. Look how cool this is. Um, so when you're rinsing, the goal is um, you want to rinse out the chemical to where we didn't expose. So remember, this was uh, let's find it. Um, this was our black. Um, so the reason this is is white because we blocked the sunlight um, from being able to expose um, the same type. So that's how we get our blue and our white. Um, and I'm like super excited about how this turned out. Um, so we, you could, you could stop here uh, if you like your print, but uh, what we're ready for now is to embellish. Uh, so in your kit, you do have some markers, um, so we can go in and draw on top of this. Um, if you've ever embroidered before, maybe you could go in and embroider some stuff in here. Um, before I embellish, my print, I do want to show one bonus step you can take, and that is toning your cyanotype print. Um, so that's actually going to require me to do this overnight, uh, so I will see you in the morning. Um, but first, let me show you those steps. Um, if you like this blue, uh, skip this step and go straight uh, to the embellishment part of this video. So this is our toning result of leaving it soaking in coffee. So I know I said we would leave it overnight, uh, but this is actually the result of soaking a uh, cyanotype print for three nights in a row. So I'm going to try to uh, use this sharpie to bring more attention to the foreground and bring in um, this opposite idea of chaos, so calm, grounded, and organized. If I keep going over the same spot, it starts to get a little bit darker, so it creates a shadow, uh, and then it's visually uh, denser, so it kind of brings, I think, those details out to the front. Um, that's what I want to do. Uh, so when you feel like you reached a stopping point, um, I want you to get your chaos collage back out, and then get lay it sit next to. Um, your, your kind of calm cyanotype and redefine the mise-en-scene in both of these. Um, so maybe starting with the place and the environment. So this one I'm in a field, this one I'm in my apartment, this one I'm alone, 
this on with a friend. Uh, this one has a lot of movement, going in all sorts of directions. This one's very stagnant and still. And the depth of space, this one has a much more clear foreground. And this one, it just, it, there's, there's none. Uh, it's, it's all over the place. Uh, so that's, that's mise en scene. Um, and we did that through uh, use of color, um, place, people, um, and the objects that we arranged in it. Um, so now when you go and take pictures in the world, um, think about like what you're including in your frame. And what's, start with the mood you want to portray and then break it down into these little elements. Um, yeah, thank you.